Okay, we had finished up simple regression, simple linear regression, and now we're going to look at multiple regression. So as you remembered, with simple regression, we had one dependent variable. Okay, that's typically what we were trying to um, predict, and it was predicted by one independent variable. And so this is what our model looked like, um, whether it's population or our sample. Our beta sub zero or B sub zero was our intercept. And then our one uh, independent variable on it would have the slope. Okay, so typically um, this is your normal simple regression model. Where now when we move into multiple regression, we still just have one y, one dependent variable. A lot of times they call this the response variable now. And it is predicted by two or more independent variables. So now we might, <clears throat> we might say, well, what if more than one thing is actually predicting our variable, our dependent variable? So as you can see, the setup is very similar, but now we just continue to add on each one of our independent variables, however many we have in our model. So a basic example with first order, so we would have notice one, two independent variables, and our, we have the same thing going on with our regression constant, our y-intercept, but then we have each one of these independent variables um, could be affecting our model. And whether we're doing the population or our estimated with our sample, we can actually get, you typically get a better prediction with more of our independent variables. And we're still looking at doing our overall, overall model, our test, to see if there is no relationship so in other words, each of these equals zero, or at least one of these in our model does not equal zero, so we can see that there is an actual relationship. Um, we actually did this when we did simple regression. We just kind of skipped over the ANOVA part, but we're going to use that this time, which we actually read the significance F, where in our Excel output, this is the actual p-value. And as we always do with hypothesis tests, we compare our p-value to our alpha. If our p-value is very, 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 very small or less than a normal 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and so on. So if the p is low, the null must go, right? And so then we would say there is one, uh, at least one of our independent variables that is affecting our dependent variable. And so then we would actually move on and try to figure out which one, okay, is making the difference. And as I mentioned, we're going to do all of this in Excel. So that's going to be kind of nice. It's just going to be, can you read the output? Uh, we also talked about residuals, which was simply the difference in um, our regression model and the predicted value. So our Y hat. So this is our actual value minus what we're predicting to actually see our difference. Uh, the, we'll have an output of the residuals for a multiple regression model. We do it the same way. And so we find a predicted y hat. How do we find that? We actually set up our equation and plug in our slopes that we get in Excel um, and then plug in the values that we're looking for. Uh, residuals are great because they help us find outliers. Okay, so remember an outlier is something that is far from the normal, and we'll see an example of this in our example. Or maybe somebody typed something in wrong or recorded something wrong, but because we're looking at um, what's influencing our pre prediction, Sometimes we can actually pull those out, which again, we'll do in our example to see what's happening with our overall model. All right, so, and then also we're gonna look at the coefficient of multiple determination, this R squared. So this is related to the same as we were looking at in our simple regression model, the coefficient of determination. 
Um, same thing that it was between a value of zero and one, the closer to one, the better. Uh, certainly our, how strong, stronger our model is. And this still represents the proportion of variation of our dependent variable y accounted for by, in this case now, many, okay, however many independent variables that we have in our model. Um, so this was the coefficient of multiple determination, which you're going to see the R squared in Excel. The adjusted R squared, um, we like to look at this and compare it with the coefficient of multiple determination. Um, it will always be less than our regular R squared, but we like the gap between these two values to be no more than a, you know, a certain percentage, okay, typically about 10%. When that gap starts to get larger, we've probably introduced too many independent variables to our model. And so we need to, you know, kind of look and see, certainly we can look with residuals, what's actually going on. Um, as you're going to see that we're going to look at our standard error, same thing with standard deviation, and see if we have any values that are three over three standard deviations, because as you remember, one standard deviation, about 68% of our data, two standard deviations, about 95%, three standard deviation, we would expect to be about 99.7%. So if we're over that 3%, then we're looking at those to be outliers. So as I mentioned, we're going to do the, the data analysis again in Excel. We're going to read the results in the next video of an actual example, which will help you with your uh, actual project for this module.